the last one that Aquinas points out in this, uh, in this, of this circulation of wise spirits is one of a so-called heretic by the name of Seger of Brabant, who was an Averroist and was condemned for his Averroism. Whatever knowledge and whatever canonized knowledge we may have, for Dante it includes figures who had been judged unworthy of knowledge or heretical or wrong, and now they are retrieved. So the idea of knowledge is one that keeps changing. The idea of the canon of knowledge keeps always expanding and including voices that had been rejected. Let me tell you more about this representation of Seger of Brabant. You understand he's an Averroist, and we do know, how does Dante go about, other than just saying he's here, how does he go about uh, justifying his salvation? Uh, Canto 10, from this point of view, is uh, retrospectively sh uh, one that sheds light on Canto 10 of Inferno, where we also saw, you remember, the Averroists and the Epicureans, uh, Guido, Cavalcanti, those who believed uh, that the mind, uh, uh, that the l love and knowledge never interact with each other, that the, the, that the mind uh, uh, goes, rationality is, is darkened and dimmed by the intrusions of the passions, right? You remember? And that the mind is one that receives ideas from the outside, all that, uh, that notion of, uh, of uh, both the inertia of the will and the divisions within the mind itself. Dante now is, is, is correcting some of those views. So let's look a little bit at these metaphors in Canto 10. This one, from whom the look returns to me, is the light of a spirit to whom, in his grave thoughts, death seemed low, slow in coming. He was killed, by the way, by a madman. Uh, and Dante writes a sonnet about him in um, uh, around 1281 uh, uh, or so. It is the eternal light of Seger, so we know that he's saved, uh, who, lecturing in the street of straw, demonstrated invidious truths. Dante gives the address of this man. He lectured, a word that it's, uh, has, has uh, a certain value in the university language, a university lexicon of the time. Uh, lecturing is uh, an activity that implies glossing, just he's the glossator of Aristotle, but he tells us where he lived, in the, in the, in the, in the street of straw in Paris, a street that now is called, by the way, the, the Rue de Foire, but is now called the Rue Dante, knowing that clearly the, the Parisians are mindful of this passage. Uh, Dante is placing Seger on the road, on the way. He's giving us his, uh, his, his, uh, his address, but he's telling us that his thinking takes place while he is on the road. You all know, you all know that philosophy is always understanding itself as a journey, a method, an exodus, right? Uh, Parmenides or Aquinas who thinks about the five ways to reach the, the ultimate uh, truths about God. And here for Dante is a philosopher is on the way to uh, theological certainty, theological truth and theological knowledge. And he de de demonstrated invidious truths. The Italian is syllogizo, made syllogisms out of, uh, in, or, or, or demonstrated, rationally demonstrated invidious truths. What are these invidious truths? Invidious truths, I, I, I'm not sure that um, all the translators would agree. Invidious truths have to be understood etymologically. This is the canto where Isidore of Seville is present, the, the, the Isidore of Seville being the arch etymologist of the Middle Ages. And Dante is showing how too we can play with etymologies. You know, Isidore of Seville is the one who believed that the whole of knowledge, the high, all, all we know, the, higher, the, the, uh, the compass of all knowledge can really be arrived at through etymologizing language. Language, the etymon of language, the origin of words will give us an access to the nature of reality. So language becomes a way of knowing the world. Dante indulges in the same activity, calling the truths that Seger pursued invidious, which etymologically means 
those things, those truths that cannot be demonstrated, those truths that cannot be seen. Philosophy appears as an art of speculation that takes us on the way to a truth that it cannot quite have access to. What are these truths that Seeger of Brabant sought access to? Um, the, the immortality of the soul? There's no way he would have known or even discovered that. Aristotle is very doubtful about the, Im the individual immortality of the soul in the treatise on the soul. He tried to consider, to view, uh, to, to decide about uh, the origin of the world. Seeger believed that the universe is uh, uh, another one of those uh, undemonstrable uh, beliefs that the universe is eternal, right? And this is an argument that so medieval thinkers and theologians engaged in. Averroes on the one side and Aquinas who maintains that philosophically you really can believe and show that the universe is really uh, is eternal. But out of faith you can go on believing in creation, that things have a beginning. Because if don't, you don't think that things have a beginning, then there's never a possibility of, of, of uh, uh, allowing for giving some ground and, and, and rooting the idea of your freedom, your innovations, the possibilities things can be different from you, from what they were before, and so on.